Hello everyone, how are you? This is Dina and today is Memorial Day. It is May 27th and I am here to give you a quick update on a project that I was able to work on today. I came in here and decided that I would pick up on one of my new mania starts and try to finish it off. And this is my pumpkin spice farm. And I am happy to report that I have a finish. This is my pumpkin spice farm. This is a 32 count Lugana fabric by Picture This Plus. And let's see, the colorway is earthen. First time I've used earthen, I think. I liked the light color. It doesn't quite pop on camera as much, but you can very, very easily see the, the lettering in person. But the star of the show to me is that little Krynik pumpkin. It is lovely. I really like the way that came out. But I have it finished, and so I'm very excited about that. And that means I have my fifth Mania finish. Um, today, I was able to start working on the homework for School of Magical Stitches. And when I looked at the homework, I saw that we were to stitch 200 stitches uh, on projects that we could equate to the letters S-P-E-W. Yes, SPEW. <laughs> it's really supposed to be a society uh, for elves and um, so you just have to pick a piece that either has the name of the project starts with that letter or the first or last name of your designer can start with that letter. So for me, my designer's name was Sue Hillis for my S. I started at the top. So I picked up my Broderie à Paris by Sue Hillis and I uh, decided to put at least 200 stitches in. And I had finished this top border and this little block here. So I came on down and did this piece and this little quilt looking portion. And it was actually 519 stitches all total. So it was way more than I had to do. And so I just decided I would stitch that motif. I knew it had at least 200 stitches in it. Uh, I had no idea it would have that many, but anyway, here's my progress. And you can see the new section that I did there. And now you get a chance to see the background color that I picked. And I do think it is matching beautifully. It has the same sort of blend quality that I was hoping for, so it doesn't stand out terribly. So I have finished that little motif and um, I'm very, I, all except the back stitching. There is a little bit of back stitching to do, but I just uh, haven't done that today. I'll do that on my next time that I pick it up. Um, <clears throat> Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Dina and today is Tuesday, May 28th. And some of you are still doing mania, so good luck to you there. Uh, I have finished my mania, and so today I was busy doing homework, uh, Magical Stitches homework. So the first thing I wanted to do was to work on my second um, letter in the word spew that we had to do a project related to the uh, letters S-P-E-W. So for me, for P, I picked the Plum, Plum Street Samples. This was a mania start, and um, when I uh, stopped stitching on it before, uh, I had a good amount done, but I had to do at least 200 stitches in it for this homework assignment. And here's where it is now. So I came over here and I finished completely this side. 
I put in the rest of the plant and the plant holder um, and the little flower down there. And that was a total of 372 stitches. And I only needed 200. And then the, for the next prompt in my homework, the next letter I had to do was an E. And as luck would have it, the artist on my next piece is her last name starts with an E. So I'm gonna have to ask Stephanie to look away because this happens to be the project I'm doing for her surprise. Okay, I'll tell you when you can look back. So hold on a minute and keep looking away. So just for everyone else, this is the artist's name here. You can see it starts with the E. And this is the piece that I was working on um, for my um, project for that letter and I was able to come over here and start this border down this side and I got half of the border done and that is a total of 427 stitches. So that's my uh, Magical Stitches homework done all but the last one and the last one is W. Stephanie you can look back now. Sorry I forgot to tell you that. I also decided I would do something I don't normally do, and that is talk about what I'm wearing. But it's for a particular purpose. So I have a little tiny clip, and it may be hard to see because of the brightness, but I have on a souvenir t-shirt today. I don't wear a lot of t-shirts, but this is a souvenir shirt. Notice all the frogs? It's called Sun Power. And what I'm gonna do is show a little clip where I went outside uh, in the bright sunlight because sunlight causes the shirt to change color. And all the frogs become different colors. So when you step outside in the sunlight, your shirt lights up and then when you come inside, it's just a black and white t-shirt. But because of all the frogs on the shirt, I wanted to show it um, for Amy, for Amy Loves Toads. So Amy, this next clip, is particularly for you. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. And I hope the rest of you are having a great day stitching and I'll talk to you later. Happy stitching everyone. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. This is a special little segment for Amy from Amy Loves Toads. We were on vacation a few years ago in Cozumel and I bought a shirt there as a souvenir and that shirt actually changes colors in the sunlight. So I've come out to the sunlight so you can see my little shirt. It says sun power, but as you can see, it's all toads, different kinds of toads and their colors, all different kinds of colors. So here I am back in the house and you can see the color is already fading and it will there we go it'll just go straight back to black and white good morning fellow stitchers this is Dina welcome back today is Wednesday and it is the 29th of May you guys that are still doing the whole month you're coming down to the final stretch <laughs> so good luck to you I'm happy to report that last night I completed the stitching on my fourth prompt for the School of Magical Stitches. I was on my final prompt. I had a little bit of a trouble coming up with something that was related to a W. However, it hit me that Weber, Martina Weber, is the designer for Chatelaine, and I have a Chatelaine, as you know, that I've just brought back out from Time Out um, <clears throat> for Jessie Marie's birthday sale. So my Chatelaine is Alpine Seasons Garden. And this is what it will look like when it's finished. I'm sorry, I only have this picture, so there's a little bit of a glare. And when I left off last time, I had the cabin and the trees finished. And the next step I mentioned I would have to do would be the clouds. 
and the bird in the air. So the props this week were for only 200 points, which is, I mean, 200 stitches, which was a little bit easier to get to. <clears throat> so I went ahead and did the backs, the um, half stitches in the clouds. And of course you have to count two of those to make one stitch. So I had to divide them in half. And then I just needed about 25 or so more stitches, really. And I didn't want to get started in the one over one stitching for the bird. So I decided to look at the very next thing I would have to stitch that wasn't one over one. And it was the very first circle of stitching that starts this circle that goes around the picture. And it's in Petite Treasure Braid. Now you're not really supposed to start stitching in Petite Treasure Braid according to the instructions until you've done all the cross stitching for the whole piece, but I've got news for you. I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna stitch mine exactly from the center all the way out, except for beading. I am going to stitch whatever comes. And my plan is to put this on my huge roller frame, this one, that I've had my Christmas um, Flowers of the Holy Night on. It's my largest roller frame, as you can see. And this one, I believe, will fit on it uh, without any trouble. And so uh, my plans are, after this stitching that I did today, or last night, um, then I'm not gonna work on this again, probably, until I get this one off, get it finished and off, because then I can put my Chatelaine on there and leave it alone, and I don't have to put Q-snaps over anything, and I'll just be stitching from the middle out, and I'll be able to roll it. Um, I My plans are to go to the middle, go from the middle in the, in the round and then work my way out. And then once I get past the middle picture and I'm into straight areas across here and here, then I could work my way all the way up and then I could roll it back down and work my way all the way down. So either way, I'm thinking this will be the last time I work on it for a while, unless I do have a key snap that will fit, you know, around the whole piece. And if I wanted to finish uh, working on that petite treasure braid or get that one over one done. Um, I have another time or two. I probably could touch it before um, before I have to put it on the roller frame. But anyway, this is how far I got with it. I did get all of the clouds done and I did get started with the petite treasure braid and I started right here and I worked my array around and when I got here, I did a gut check and I counted the spaces, the stitches that would have been blank in between here and they matched up. I did a little minor celebration, I have to tell you, because it's so important to get it right, that first ring, because everything builds off of that, you know. So anyway, very happy indeed. Um, and then I had more stitches than I needed, um, way more than I needed. So I went ahead, when that thread ran out, uh, I stopped. So I just stitched till my braid ran out and then I will pick it back up again um, the next time. And I've definitely, I've got a bird here that's one over one. I've got a pathway here in green that's one over one. But to be honest, I wanted to do this circle around first so that if I were off at all, I could fudge in the little pathway here, but I wanted my circle to be right. So that's where we are on Alpine Seasons Gardens um, from Chatelaine. Well, now that means I'm through for this week with homework for Magical Stitches. I was also able to use that very same stitching for the final prompt in Cheryl's group because it was to stitch on your oldest whip. And this is by far my oldest whip. So I was able to do that and I posted that last night. And so I'm through with that week's prompt as well. The only thing I have left in Magical Stitches to work on is the final extra credit 
which is watching the Harry Potter movie and stitching while watching it, but I have a whole month of June to get that done. So there's no urgency for this week. So today I looked at my calendar and there is a sale going on in one of the Facebook groups. It's a seasonal sale. It's um, to stitch on something seasonal. It's something for all seasons, I think is the name of the sale and it's in cross stitch finish line. And so I think what I'm gonna do is go back over here and pick up my flowers of the holy night and start working on it. Because as I said, now I have a reason that I wanna get it off that roller frame because I wanna repurpose that roller frame for my chatelaine. So I think I may put some stitches in that today. I don't have any set number I need to get. I can just stitch however much or however little I wanna do on it. Uh, but I just think that I wanna participate in that sale since I have the opportunity to do that. And of course, I'll come back and show you how far I get. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is still Wednesday, May 29th, and I am here to show you what I was able to accomplish today. I mentioned I was gonna work on my Glendon Place Flowers of the Holy Night for a, um, there's a season for everything sale in cross stitch finish line. And um, I was able to do a good bit of stitching this afternoon. And so I'm here to show you my progress. This is where I'm at now. So today I stitched this red leaf and these two green leaves. And I'm happy to get this red leaf done because I only have one of these big leaves left to do for the whole pattern. The center of the pattern runs right through the middle of those poinsettias here. So all of this below that line is in the second half, which is wonderful. So today I got this done and I'm really happy that I did. And so the next time I work on it, my hope is to get the same amount done over here, and those leaves done, and then I'll have a big leaf in the center before I get to the three small motifs here and the border, border leaves. But anyway, I am thrilled that it's over halfway done. I was glad to get to put some stitches in it today just for a Christmas sale. And I have a um, busy day tomorrow, uh, so I don't know what all I'll get to stitch on. But since it's still May, it is still open for me to do whatever I want. So stay tuned, and you'll see the surprise tomorrow. <laughs> Happy stitching, everyone. Good night. Hello, my stitchy friends. Welcome back. It is still um, Thursday, May 30th, and I am here to share with you an update. So today, I found myself with a little time. My husband was on a big, long hike, and I decided I would do my last extra credit for Magical Stitches, and that was to watch the Harry Potter movie, The Prisoner, I uh, know, The um, Goblet of Fire, and stitch while doing it. And so I decided I would try that, and um, I confirmed that I don't do that well. <laughs> I got really involved in the movie and forgot to stitch part of the time, and then I'd stop and stitch a little bit, and then I'd catch myself watching the movie again. Anyway, it was funny. Um, I'd forgotten a lot of it. It was really neat to see it again. Uh, but I decided to work on one of my mania starts, which is count twice, stitch once. And I'll put a picture in to show you where I was when I started. And now I'm going to have to put a picture in to show you where I stopped. And then I went about doing other things around the house and I just kept hearing my name being called by this piece. There was so little left to finish, just the rest of the flower and the back stitching on the cage was all I had left to do. And I thought, 
I can't stand it. I've got to finish it. So I sat down this evening and I finished my Count Twice Stitch Once by Plum Street Samplers. And here it is. It's still wrinkled, as you can see from me holding it, doing the back stitching. But I think it's just lovely. I love this frog. I love the frog with his tongue and he's just taken that little part of that handle off that plant. It just cracks me up because this is all about counting before we stitch so we don't have to frog. And there he is waiting and just waiting to get you. And here I come with the cage. <laughs> I want to cage that frog. I never want to have him visit me again. And I guess that's what it means. If you want to cage the frog, you have to count twice before you stitch. So anyway, there's my finish. I made one substitution. I didn't use the call for fabric. I Instead, I used 32 count Jovelin lamb's wool. And I just think that's really, really pretty. And I did not have the called for um, camouflage. And I'm trying to see here what type of classic color works. I didn't have camouflage in my stash when I kitted this up for Mania. And I had pulled what they said was going to be the um, substitute for it, which was a DMC 935. And it was a very deep, dark green. And I thought, mm -mm, I don't like that. So instead, I wanted sort of a model look for my frog, and so I wound up pulling DMC 3023 and 3052. A little bit darker green and a gray green. And I just, I just uh, blended the colors. Yeah, that's me, creating a blend where there is not one. But anyway, I want you to look at that frog. I think he's precious. I really like the color. And so he's got a, a kind of a grayish green color. So he doesn't look like the plants, but you could see where he would blend in. And I just felt like that was a, a really good um, color. So I was pleased with that substitution. And uh, I'm really tickled to have another finish. Um, this is uh, another one of my starts for Mania that I have finished. I've lost count now. I don't know whether it's the fifth one or the sixth one. Anyway, I did look back at all my whips. I, I have a card on each whip that I create as I kit it up. And it has just pertinent information on it. So I have the name of the pattern, the designer, the fabric count, and name and color, the day I start it, the day I finish it, and any special notes, um, whether it's a gift or things like that. And I keep this card in a little file wallet for myself in alphabetical order so that as I finish something or as I'm talking about something, I can always pull this card. So if I lose the tag on the fabric or anything like that, I've got the pertinent information here. And then when I finish it, I've got all the details to put in my stitching journal and I journal all of my finishes. I don't journal what I stitch um, every day because I mark it on my calendar as I plan it. And I don't stitch, I don't write a journal about how I'm feeling or what I'm doing. I just stitch. And the only thing I record is my estimated time. So in my journal, at the end when I do finish a piece, I actually have a record of about the estimated hours it took me to finish a piece. So. That way, if I'm planning on stitching something about the same size by the same designer, I can always kind of look back and say, oh, that's gonna be about this long a time. Anyway, I'm very happy to have that finish. And I just uh, am grateful that you let me share it with you. And I did look at those cards today and I found out that all the smalls I started for Mania, so I'd have little things to take with me, they're all done. They're all, they're all finished. All the rest of my new starts that I did in Mania are medium pieces. They're not smalls anymore. Oh well. <laughs> so, and I did, I did get the benefit of taking one of my smalls with me to my stitching meetup Saturday. Um, it was my July year of celebration and I did finish it there. 
So that was fun, and I stitched on it the entire time I was there, and, and it was easy to do and talk and visit. So I think what that's telling me is I'm going to have to do another small uh, and keep and keep one going all the time so I can take it with me. But anyway, glad to have this one finished. It's another finish and eked out in the month of May to help my uh, stash, stitch from stash budget before I go to StitchCon and blow it all, <laughs> which I probably will do. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the rest of your uh, week. Mania is over, I think, for everybody tomorrow that's actually doing it in the month of May. I know last year a couple of people did things that took them even into a little bit into June. Uh, but I am going to start doing the 24 hours uh, of cross-stitch uh, challenge and... Um, that with the uh, School of Magical Stitches and my uh, other uh, sales that I participate in, you know, I'll be busy. That's it for today. I am gonna probably go in and watch a little TV now um, or do something a little different to rest uh, because I was stitching with a purpose today. <laughs> in the meantime, you guys, happy stitching. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Friday. It is May 31st. Woohoo, we made it! <laughs> well, I just want to let you know, I snuck in one more start. It's a restart and I had um, talked with you recently about a give up that I was going to do, which was a uh, Teresa Wentzler. It's the Nativity. And I had it just about halfway finished, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't work on it anymore. Uh, I did not like that pattern on the fabric that I had chosen. It was too small a count for me because of the one over one faces. They actually were distorted. I just couldn't get past it. So I thought if I'm going to put this much work into something, I want it to be something I enjoy. So instead, I went and got me some antique white even weave out of my stash, and I restarted it. So here's my restart. Now, I want to show you something. I have my piece because I'm going to cut it off the fabric and hopefully salvage the rest of the fabric because it's a pretty big piece of fabric. But I just wanted to show you the difference that I see, see if you see it too, in the two different pieces of fabric. Here is the same corner on this fabric that I've stitched here. You can see how much smaller this is and you can see how much clearer it appears to me anyway, that I can see it better. Anyway, I'm happy with the restart. I think it's gonna be lovely. And I also discovered when I was looking for fabric for my restart, that there's a good bit of open space in the border. And that fabric shows through. And I wasn't sure that it was a good idea to have the green after all that I first started with because there are lazy daisy stitches all through that border. And they're in a green. It's almost exactly this color. So I would have had to change that anyway. I would have had to make some adaptations. So here we are. This is my start. Now, the good thing is Today, right before I got started with this, I saw on Facebook through the School of Magical Stitches that we had a pop-up challenge. We had to, as um, a whole group, each of the houses had to stitch 15,000 stitches, I think it is. But our, well, someone in our uh, common room had put out a post saying, if everybody will stitch 425 stitches by Sunday night at midnight, we will bust this wide open. We'll hit it. And I have a, 
a very busy weekend <laughs> prepping for my food pantry service so that I do with my food, my community food pantry. So I thought I better get mine done today. Thank goodness I was going to do a new start. And um, I was really glad to be able to do border because these straight lines, you know, you can get some stitching done. And I did. I got 400 and I think 85 or so. But I, I got more than my 425. So I at least did my part um, for the school. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. I'm going to sit this down. This is my American Dream lap stand and it's heavy. <laughs> so that was my restart on na the nativity. And um, I'm kind of glad to have that done. It, it didn't sit well with me when I had to put something away like that that was unfinished and, you know, unresolved. And so now that it's restarted, I feel better. You know, I just, I just feel at peace about it. And I enjoyed stitching it so much today. And in the past, I used to have to make myself stitch on it. So I'm really glad I restarted it. I kind of wish I had thought to do that a lot sooner, but I'm glad I did. Okay, that is my mania stitching for today. I did have a person um, send me a suggestion for my video um, after watching my last one where I ended my mania, uh, I thought, until today when I had another start. Um, they suggested I do a mania wrap up and I thought I think that would be fun. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna film it this weekend, not tonight, cause it's kinda late. But I'll pull out all of my mania starts and I'll put them in order. And um, I will show you the ones that I started, whether I finished them or not, what state they're in. Cause I've got, you know, one that's fully finished. I've got, I've got one that I'm ready to lace and frame. So if I get that done, before I film, I'll have two that are fully finished, but um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But what I will have to warn you is that on all of the whips that I worked on in Stitch Mania, because, you know, I had eight whips going into Stitch Mania, and I worked on each one of them. Well, I may have worked on them since the day that I stitched on them for Stitch Mania, because I may have used them for Magical Stitches homework or for another sal. Um, so I'll just have to show you where I am today um, on all of my mania starts and, um, and on my whips. So look for that coming up in the next day or two. But otherwise, that will conclude <laughs> my stitching in mania anyway, uh, my new starts. I do want to share something fun. I'm going to take a little... Um, tip from uh, Caroline and uh, from, on you know off the grid she loves to get questions every week from Kyle and her question this last video that I watched uh, I don't know if it's her most recent but it's the one I've gotten to because I'm sometimes behind a little bit trying to watch everybody's mania videos Kyle asked the question where is the craziest wildest most unusual place you've ever cross stitched Caroline, I don't think, really felt like she had stitched anywhere that was crazy or wild, or, or um, but it just made me laugh out loud because I have stitched somewhere kind of crazy to me, somewhere I don't think people would expect it, and I'll tell you that story. When my husband and I were um, newly married, uh, and we were... Uh, we were not well off, you know, we were living on student income and, you know, everything was tight and entertainment was difficult to come by. It was pretty much what you could do for free, you know. Um, one of the things we did one weekend is my husband decided he would love to attend a monster truck rally at the Coliseum in the town where we were. And I didn't really care to go to a monster truck rally, but I hated to spend the whole day by myself and him by himself and not have anybody to talk to. And so I agreed to go under one condition, that I could take earplugs with me and my stitching. 
and said yes. I actually cross-stitched at a monster truck rally. <laughs> All day. It was wonderful. We sat pretty high up in the stands where the seats were very affordable. And I took my cross-stitch out. And I stitched the whole day and I just wore my earplugs to try to keep from getting a terrible headache because it is very loud. Uh, we laugh about it to this day, you know, that only I would go to a monster truck rally and cross stitch, but I did. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that and ask any of you that um, have cross stitched anywhere unusual uh, or different or funny like that. To, to share it on your channel or if you don't have a channel share it with me in the comments I would love to hear it and um, and I think that that we would have some fun stories if we do that so Caroline thank you and Kyle for that uh, prompting of my memory of a, of a fun event and a funny time for me um, when I was stitching in public I have thoroughly enjoyed stitch mania I will do a little recap for you probably over the weekend sometime. And I hope that each and every one of you are very busy and very happy with your stitching. Hello everyone, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. Today is June 1st. And I would like to share with you what I've been working on today. Because it's June 1st, I was able to start working on the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch monthly challenge. And so today I tackled the first letter. I don't know that I'll do them all in order, but today was the T that starts the spelling of 24. And for the T, I chose to do Jumpin' Jack Frost by Tempting Tangles. Not only is it Tempting Tangles as the designer, but I call them Tall Fall Leaves. So I had a T in both directions. Anyway, I'm sorry this is just a, my copy offline because this was a download. And it was one of my uh, starts for Mania. And since it met the prompt in uh, the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, challenge I decided to work on it today. Now in that challenge we can work on something for either an amount of time or we can work on it for stitches. So today uh, I was using my stitch count for the School of Magical Stitches for the pop-up event. It's still going on and even though I turned in 484 so stitches yesterday. We still hadn't hit our 15,000 today, so I decided to count my stitches today for that as well. And I was able to do um, a few more uh, 384 on this piece. So let me show you what that looks like. I've already rolled it up. I wish I hadn't, but I did and I don't want to undo it now. But I even did the back stitching on the top, and so I ro I've already rolled it up to have it go across. But um, anyway, this is the uh, top row of it and uh, we're moving forward. <laughs> so now I pick, when next I pick up, I will do the words here until I get down to the Jumpin' Jack himself on that pumpkin. So, <clears throat> had a good day today, got some additional stitches in for the School of Magical Stitches. Got my first prompt done in the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch monthly sale for June. So I'll talk to you soon when I have something else to share with you. And uh, in the meantime, happy stitching. Hi, just wanted to share this with you. I am sitting here, work about to start working again on my Teresa Wentzler for a prompt and I realized that one of the blends that was called for I'm going to be working on in the border I had not put together. So I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to remind those of you who may be new and didn't see this the first time I shared it, how I prep my threads for a Teresa Wentzler 
or any other project that is so heavily tweeted the way that hers is, blending two threads of two different colors, one thread each of each color. So this is a blend that is used all throughout this picture. So what I have done is on my bobbin, I have written the two numbers. I always put the lowest number first so that I put it in my box in that order so I come to it quicker. And I cut even lengths of the two colors and then I pull them apart into the six strands each and I'd go ahead and pair the two different colors together in a strand. And as you can see, I wrap that strand. I wrap one on this end, one on this end, and then I wrap it around to create a layer. And now I've wrapped one in the middle, and now I'm gonna wrap it around the center again because there's one between those two now. And I'm only doing this uh, separate like this so that when I get ready to pull them off, it's easy to find the one that's the first one I need to use. Now I'm about to use this, this color, so I will use the sixth strand in my hand. I don't have to put it on here. But now that will go in my box with the rest of my threads. Let me grab that. Here are my threads for this project. And what I have done is I've put them in numerical order. And whenever there's a tweeted number, I put the lowest number by itself in front. I put the tweeted number right behind it. So this will have the number 316 right in front of it. When I go to look for this blend and the first number in the blend is 316, I go look at 316 and here it is. It's right behind it. So I'll pull off a strand, I use it. What I don't use, I just put right back on here if I have enough left to work with it. And that way, you know, we talk about how frustrating it is to have all these blends. Well, guess what? That way, every single blend is already set up on its own card. And then as I use it, when I run out, let's get one that's lower. See, I've used all but two strands of that one. So when I run out of this one, this 523 blended with 3013, which is sitting right behind 523, when I run out, before I put that back in the box, I will cut a length of each of those two threads, I'll pull them apart, and I'll rewrap those six pairs so it's set up for the next time. So for the majority of the time, I'm just going in here and pulling a bobbin out just like you would for any symbol of a single color. I wrap my threads I've already pulled off and I'm good to go. I don't have to look for the two. I don't have to measure and tweed them. I take a few minutes and it, it takes a little while, but it's only one time for the majority of it. And then if I run out of a color, I just do that bobbin again uh, so that as I'm stitching, I'm not having to create blends. So now as, as I look at this pattern and it's a tweed color, doesn't matter to me. I just go grab the bobbin and I'm ready to go. So I, this is something I do to help me mentally um, when I'm stitching a heavily tweeded project to not feel like the tweed is such an inconvenience. It's just grabbing a bobbin and going just like it would be with any other color. I hope that helps you um, if you're working with a tweed. If you're, if you're doing a smaller project and it only happens once or twice and, and it's a small picture, it's not worth your time to do it. I agree. But if you've ever stitched a Teresa Wentzler, you know that the majority of that pattern is going to be a tweed. Um, I will share this with you. Here are, here's the colors. Every bracket you see is tweeted. Every bracket. Those are tweeted colors. There are as many tweeted colors, if not more, than there are those that aren't. So setting it up that way is just like having another color for that symbol. And I'm hoping that will help uh, you if you have worked on anything that has heavy 
heavy tweeting um, like a Teresa Winsler. I just wanted to share that with you since I had to set up that bobbin uh, for this color because somehow in setting up my box of colors when I first did this a long time ago, I missed that color. So I thought, oh, well, I need to stop and do that and now's a good time to share it with you. I hope that it's a helpful hint and I hope you have a great time stitching. Um, if you use it, I hope it works well for you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hello everyone, this is Dina, and today is Sunday. It is June 2nd, and I have been working on one of the 24 hours of cross stitch prompts today. We can't start our Magical Stitches homework until tomorrow. So I thought I would get this one done today. And I decided to put quite a bit of work into this piece because it's one of my gift stitches. So Stephanie, you have to look away. <laughs> So the prompt was to stitch something that had to do with the letter E. And the E in this piece is the last, is the first initial of the designer's last name. So I'm gonna show you now what I was able to do today. I concentrated in this area over here. So I got all of this part in the center done and then I came over here and I finished all of this. And then I moved down and I did the rest of this. So I got a good bit done today. I was very happy with that progress. I decided to opt for the time on this one. Okay, Stephanie, you can look back now. Thank you for looking away. And I decided to put in four hours today. Uh, you can do 24 minutes or 240 minutes, which is four hours. And I decided to do four hours since I had the day. And so that's the amount of work I got done in four hours. I'm very happy with that. So I hope you've had a good Sunday. I hope it's been a restful day for you. And um, I have one other quick thing to show you. Let me grab it. I worked on this for the W of 24. So if you're following me, I've done the T, the W, and now the E. But for the W, it was Teresa Wentzler. And I did all of the Lazy Daisies and the um, diamond stars that are in between each one. And it's hard to see them because they're almost the color of the fabric. There are both of those are blended threads, both of them. But I went all the way across, so I was very happy to do that. And in that case, I used the 24 minutes. So now you're caught up with me for my 24 hours of cross stitch challenge. I have completed through the letter E. Hello, fellow floss tubers. Today is Monday, June 3rd, and I am here for a report. I have just finished my homework for the School of Magical Stitches. I also was able to complete a prompt for um, the 24 hours of cross stitch. So um, first, let's talk about the School of Magical Stitches. Our homework this week is that we have to pick a whip that we can use to tell the story of how we stole the egg from the dragon. In the very first um, competition at the wizard tournament, each of the four contestants had to steal an egg that was being guarded by a dragon. So we have been um, instructed that we have to take an egg from the dragon and we have to explain how we did it. So I did a little research and I found out that this whip would work perfectly. The whip that I chose is Flowers of the Holy Night, the poinsettia. And the reason I chose it is because the poinsettia flower is mildly poisonous to dogs and cats and dragons. 
it causes them to have drooling, to lick their lips, um, to vomit or have diarrhea. Um, it can also cause skin and eye irritation, but it is mildly poisonous. So it's not terminal. I'm not going to kill the dragon. I just want to distract it so I can get the egg, right? So I knew that if I took my poinsettia and I put them all around the egg as close as I could get to the dragon, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful with these variegated flosses that the dragon would be attracted to the flower and eat it or at least go smell it and touch it with its nose. And then, voila. When the dragon starts all the drooling and the skin irritation and the eyes start watering and the dragon's trying to figure out what's going on and is distracted, then I slip in and I get the egg. So that is why I chose to stitch on my poinsettia called Flowers of the Hopi Night. Now the way that I got this to apply to my 24 hours of cross stitch is that I used it for the O for O Holy Night for flowers of the holy night. So here's my piece. I want to talk to you a little bit about what I did. So I'm going to move to the side of it where I can see what you can see. But if you recall, I had one of these, it was this one right here. I had one leaf left to do on the center flower when I left off before. And I had completed this, but I had not done this. So today I had to stitch a thousand stitches for the dragon challenge. So I stitched this large leaf here, which helped a lot, and this large leaf. And then I hit this one, and then I came over to the side that I had not worked on yet, and I picked up the green, the little green one. And right now I can't remember. Oh, it was this one. This one. So those were the four things, one, two, three, four motifs that I did today and it totaled 1,092 stitches. Now I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna keep going to 1,200 because quite frankly, I'm tired. <laughs> but I am very happy about where I got on this piece because if you'll recall, this is well now into the bottom section. I now have three small poinsettias to go here and the leaves in the corner. So, that doesn't sound like a lot, but I will tell you, when I sit down to have a rotation on this piece, if I'm going to work on it on, for one day, which might, you know, be anywhere from three to four hours of stitching on a good day, I can generally get two uh, flower leaves of the small ones done. And sometimes I can get two and one little green one in a session. But the homework for Magical Stitches is completed. So now I'll just keep working on my 24 hours of cross stitch, knocking out those prompts, hopefully a couple of them during that 24 hours. So once again, I'll show you my flowers of the holy night. It's coming along, it's getting there. And I'm excited because once I get the next uh, couple of um, leaves done, I've got two more here to do. I'll be rolling it again. That's pretty, that's pretty exciting to me to get to roll it up a little bit more. So um, thanks for letting me share it with you. Hello everyone. It is still Monday, June 3rd, and I had no idea I would be back again so soon. But as I was looking through my whips, trying to determine what I'm going to take with me to a stitching meetup with a friend on Wednesday, I realized that I had enough time to meet another prompt. And so I, um, I did. <laughs> I had two stitch alongs or two prompts that I could meet with this. Um, project that I'm about to share with you. The first one is a Facebook group I'm in with Cheryl McKinney, and she had put up a challenge for uh, five prompts for the Galapagos Islands, one of which was volcanoes. You had to do something to do with volcanoes. 
And then the second prompt was for the 24 hours of cross stitch and it was for the letter R. So this is the piece that I used, my Riolis kit. So the R is pretty obvious, right, for Riolis. But the connection for the volcano is that Japan, where this cherry tree is, has volcanoes, but this cherry tree is a survivor and it has survived the volcanoes of Japan. And uh, I call it happiness because I have, thanks to some of you out there watching my videos who have family members who can read or speak Chinese or Japanese, I have learned that these symbols are used in both um, communities and that it actually means happiness. So I'm gonna be calling this happiness from now on. And the good news is I can leave the symbols in there because it's to commemorate my son and my husband's trip to Japan, so I wanted to make sure it was Japanese. Okay, in Cheryl's prompt for volcanoes, we had to stitch at least 100 or 200 stitches, depending on how many tokens you wanted to go for. And in the uh, prompt for the 24 hours of cross stitch, you could either do time or you could do stitches, the smallest of which is 120. So I decided to go for the 120 so that I could meet both prompts at the 100 stitch mark in Cheryl and the 120 in the 24 hours of cross stitch. And I actually got 132 stitches in. That's not a lot, so it's not gonna be a huge push forward. But it taught me something about this piece that I'll share with you. This is my um, pro progress. This was the very first limb that I stitched. I had that and a little bit of the gray right in here done. And then this is what I finished up. I started where I left off here and I finished that limb until it got to the gnarly tree trunk right here. And the next time I pick it up, I'll try to pull all of this into the tree trunk. But what it showed me is that if, if how I want to approach this is limb by limb, because this wool floss is so easy to pull off of these. I'm loving this. And I can estimate just about how much I'm gonna need based on how many stitches I've got on that limb of that color, cut that little piece off, stitch that color on that limb, and move on to the next color. So I am working my way down the limb color by color. And it went really well. It went quickly today, so I was wondering if I would even have time to stitch this, you know, in time for Christmas, but maybe. I know I have a lot I'm stitching for Christmas or for next year, so even if I have to, you know, push it out till next August for a birthday, I could do that, but I, I think I might be able to finish it in time because it's seeming to go fairly quickly, and the wool, is just beautiful because it really gives you a fluffy appearance. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not disappointed in this kit at all. So so far, the uh, evaluation of this Riolis kit that I got um, from MyBobbin.com is excellent. So I encourage you to go there and shop, and uh, not to be afraid of a kit that has the wool floss in it. Um, I really appreciate Ginger Gerald telling me to use smaller uh, lengths, and now that I'm cutting off just the size of length I need to finish that color just on that one limb at a time, it's even smaller, so it's going even better, even quicker. So, uh, very, very excited that I got two prompts done today. I hope your stitching has been as successful as mine has today. Happy stitching, everyone. Good night.